Hi, Matt from Modern Samurai here. Now, don't forget, guys, subscribe, click the bell notification. Uh, today, we're going to be working with Martin from Aikido Bastards, and we're going to be doing hopefully some experimentation to see how we go, trying to see what we can mix up, see what we can learn, trying to put things together. So the idea of this, guys, uh, is to try and experience and try and get some knowledge between us. YouTube, welcome. Uh, Sensei Martin here from the Aikido Bastards, here over in Wales with the uh, Trains of Modern Samurai. Uh, if you like what you see, head over to the YouTube channel, uh, like, share, subscribe. Uh, and there'll be plenty more footage coming. All right guys, so thanks for joining us on this. Now what we're trying to do here is we're just gonna have a little experimentation, a little bit of a knowledge share. The idea of this is not to dismiss anything or any art or any person. The idea is actually trying to add on uh, instead of take away. So guys, for people that are watching this and thinking, well, we don't need to do this, this is irrelevant, it's not part of what we wanna learn, that's fine, that's for you and you keep that, that's absolutely okay. That's not who this is aimed at, okay? What well, this is, this is an exploration for people that want to actually, you know, try things out, try new ways of doing things, try different things, okay? And this is a, a you know, this is a learning curve for me as well. So the whole idea of this is that I'm going to learn some stuff from Martin, Martin may learn some stuff from me, and we share and exchange knowledge. This is no, you know, this isn't one thing's better than the other, or one thing's superior to the other. Do you have anything to add on that? No, 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 spot on, exactly that. It's, it's open mindset, you know, actually. The stuff you've gained from no, no ultimate style, no ultimate technique. We can learn from each other, and learning, you know, yeah, it's that nice open mind, you know, it works, things work. Absolutely, right. So, with that in mind, um, just to clarify, we've had a little chat beforehand with regards to what, what we'd like to get from this. But that's as far as it's gone. We haven't practiced anything, we haven't rehearsed anything, we haven't tried anything, we haven't listed any techniques or anything. So this is completely organic and free form, right? So if it's a little bit messy in places, that's why. If it's a little bit sort of bumpy in places, that's why. If it doesn't follow a very specific line, that's why. It's because what's happening is, um, you know, we're, we're just testing things, checking things out, and, and, and whatever will happen will happen. And so that's kind of where we're at with this. So don't expect it to be really polished, guys. It's not going to be that. We're just going to have some fun with it, and hopefully you guys enjoy it too. Right, so one of the first things that we're going to look at then is uh, a temi or strike kick. So the reason it's called, what it is, why is it called temi? Why is it not called strike kick? Right, okay, we use Japanese terminology, it's traditional terminology. We should call it striking, it makes it much easier to understand, but that's what we're going to talk about. Okay, right. so, um, so what we're going to do is we're going to look at some of that, and, and hopefully what we're going to do is to, is to break down some of these uh, elements to that and to, to see um, what's good, what can be improved upon, um, what's realistic to today's sort of environment, so on and so forth, and we're just going to see what happens, okay? So um, we talked during the interview, and we talked about some of the, the different types of striking yeah. within what you do, so I think that's a good place to start. I think if you show yeah. us um, some of the striking that you guys do within Aikido, and then maybe I'll show you a few of the little bits of what, yeah. some of the ways we would do it, and we'll go from there. Do it sideways or to the camera? So if you do it, um, if you show me, so if we come this way a little bit, and that way then we've got a, a full body shot there. So. Um, I did the first one, I did the show Minucci, the upper Minucci, and then how we would deliver our seat yeah. and ideas. Show Minucci, there's something there, backhand comes up, straight to the forehead, ideally going all the way down, like sort of. So if you weren't in the way, it would be finished here, up there. The upper Minucci starts the same, comes up, and then I'm coming in, next, across there, again, a bit further away, and again, finishes all the way through. Ski. Open punch, come through and again, it's yeah. the same leg, same arm, so it, it, it trails all the way through. And obviously there'll be yeah. Jodansky, 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 what's going like. They're the, literally the five main attacks. After that, we're looking back grabs, okay. but that's not the focus video, we can talk about the Atemi. So they're the five main Atemis that use an idea. Okay, yep. So, um, again, we talked in the video and you said that they were based on uh, essentially sword strikes. Yeah. So, if you think about my sword, then mm -hmm. I'll show you, Richie, there would be my yep. sword cut, yep. Yep. or it would be yep. up, sword cut, ski, ski, ski. So, that's where they come from. Yeah. That makes perfect sense. Um, and it, when you put it in, in the essence of like sword striking, it makes perfect sense as to why it's done. Um, however, if we look at sort of an arm striking, let's put it like that, um, then, then 
the strikes tend to be a little different. So um, if we look at, if, we, if I just break that down a little bit, just from my point of view, okay, because again, I don't want to dismiss anything, but what I do want to make sure is that I don't miss anything. So first and foremost, if we're looking at some of these strikes, now by the way, guys, just want to say, because it doesn't really come across on video, they're actually quite solid in the way that those strikes are there, and I'm pretty sure you could hit those with quite severe impact if you wanted to, I could feel that the energy was there to do so, even though they were being pulled and misplaced purposefully um, when you enter the side there, okay? But if we look at this, direct strike to the head here, as we already mentioned, there's, there's more risk of injury to my hand than there is to your head at that point. That's, that's just a, that's a given. So um, as strikes go, that wouldn't be something that would actually sort of recommend. No. And, and, and as you rightly said, that's not something you would see. Um, with regard to the, what was this one called? The called this? Yoko Manucci. Yoko Manucci. Okay, so if we look at that one and we look at that as a sort of chopping motion, that's recognised in a number of different systems. And depending on where you're aiming that, that can be a very, very effective blow. It is throughout different systems, yeah? And especially if you're looking to, um, you know, arteries, that kind of thing, then, then it's, it's well worth doing. So that's, that is actually a really, a really useful one. Again, straight punch striking, again, can be very, very effective, very strong punching. Again, a lot of different systems have that. However, if you throw the strike again, and this is where I bring this up. Oh, if you just go to chest just for the sake of showing a punch, okay? So this is where I would I would question this now. So if we come back and we do this again, all right. Now, what we're seeing is the setup. It's very stylized. We're seeing the motion, the stepping through, the stepping forward. And from that point of view, that would be where I would say, okay, well, that's something that we can look to amend straight away to make it a little more, more realistic. Because if I'm throwing a punch, Okay, then what I'm trying to do is I don't want to let you know that it's coming. Now obviously if we're practicing I want to give you due warning. So if I say I'm going to throw a jab, I'm going to let you know it's coming, I'm going to overemphasize it, I'm going to show it. If I'm just throwing a jab, I'm just going to throw the jab, right, which makes it a lot more difficult to do anything with and to control. Okay? And so when you see these kind of strikes where the stepping through straight line strikes especially, you see this a lot in Japanese systems, it's incredibly strong, there's no denying, they're massively powerful. And if somebody stands still long enough for me to land this kind of thing, then, then that's going to have an impact, there's no two ways about it. The problem being is that if I'm starting from all the way over here, this isn't fighting range for starters, okay? Very few people start to fight from this kind of range. Secondly, is there's a whole lot of telegraphing coming on. Okay? So what I mean by that is if I'm here and I step 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 and I throw, there's a whole lot of things you could do, right? Way before you've got to deal with the punch. As we talk about are there injuries, you know, that's where the, the really works, where the tank can works, because as, as, as that punch is coming in, I've got the time, as you said, yeah. to be moving on the inside. Yeah, absolutely. Which is how our Kyo defense works. It comes on that big, that Yoko Ninja tackle, that punch really is, gives me time, all the tanks that you're coming in with that tank can, what I might be doing, twisting off. Yeah. To take the technique. I've got time for. If you commit and if you leave it, going out there. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Yeah, and that's the that's the thing with that, isn't it? Is where we're talking about the, the stylization of it, which which allows then for certain other things to take place. Yeah. All right. So um, one of the things that that we look at, and, and one of the things that people say about Aikido a lot, is um, that it involves balance, right? And, and, and usually what happens is the attacker steps through, as we just saw with some of those little demonstrations there, they step through and quite often what will happen is they overbalance, right? And so that's an accusation that's thrown, right? So I just want to test that a little bit, okay? So what we're going to do, if, if I can uh, stick a bash out on you, my friend? Yeah, no problem. All right, let me get some gloves very quickly. I should have thought of that just to be on the safe side. Okay. Okay, so again, we, we all know that striking with gloves and without gloves are different. So before anyone sort of jumps in with that, I'm putting the gloves on for his safety uh, more than anything else, all right? Even though we're not, we're not going to be hitting one another properly, just want to make sure there's no injuries, okay? Right, now, from here, all I want you to do, okay, is basically you're just going to look to try and grab hold of my hand. Okay. Okay, because that's like a fundamental, I believe. Yeah. You start like you know from literally grabs and day one. It's probably where it's better suited actually. Okay. 
Chromium Core Cache. All right, okay. Now, none of, again, let me just clarify this, right? None of what we're doing today is to make anyone look foolish or make anyone look silly or, you know, put anybody down. That's not it at all. What we're trying to do is find a baseline, right, so that we can work from that. Once we understand the baseline, then we can, you know, then we can work towards making things better, yeah? So look at it like trying to fix a puncture in a bike, yeah? You put it in water, you find where the bubbles are, you fix the bubbles, yeah? That's what we're talking about. So from here, look, all we're going to do is just the basic drill. So what I want you to try and do is, is just basically grab my hand, okay? All right, there, that's easy, isn't it? Yeah, I'm not moving, okay? Now, if I move a little more, so I'll just move a little more, right? So now it becomes harder, but still possible. But now if I incorporate some striking with it, nice and relaxed, so here, look. Okay, hold it there. I think I'm getting more in than I'm yeah. not. Yeah. Right. Now I'm purposely not landing these full. I'm trying to keep it very, very light because we're just going through and showing a very quick, just quite a, and showing a very quick premise on this, which is, if I commit, all right, so if I'm here and I commit through to the punch, then that allows a lot of this body movement, a lot of this angling, okay? If I now come from here and, and I just throw my strike push here, that makes things a little different. So it doesn't make it impossible, shortens the distance, yeah. shortens the timing, shortens, um, shortens your movement as well, okay? So from here, look, very, very simple one, okay? So all I'm doing is just showing some drills. So if we take the half here, perfect. Okay, and one of the drills that we do is we actually visualize hitting the person but don't hit them, all right? Now, again, if you think about singular punches and we think about this kind of thing, that's fine, that's strong. But we want to try and work on that, okay? They say punches in bunches, which means very few people are going to throw a single strike. Even non-trained people, they'll come in, windmilling, swinging for the fences. All right, so my motion here, look, is I'm just going to practice, and what I'm going to do is I'm just putting my punches to a place where they're going to impact where I want them to go, okay? Now, by doing this nice and gently like this, I can start to picture it in my mind, you can start to picture it in your mind, okay, because that's actually really, really important, because when we talked about that attack just a moment ago, where we came down with this strike here, and I came here, very specific footwork, very specific body movement, now that's a completely different animal than if I hook him here, or hook him here, okay, so, I think a good base point or a start point would be to look at some of the common kind of strikes that are more likely and then look to see how you can apply what you do within those. Yeah, I mean, for a few, the main strike that in the police we're taught is it's that haymaker punch. That is your yeah. untrained, I think they do the snatch and the spear package, or sure whatever, but yeah. your, your haymaker or a variant of it, whether it's rising, whether it's sort of, yeah. Downward, yeah. is your basic untrained fighters go to fight closely probably by having a bit of a clinch because yeah. they're not aware of distance and they've probably had a few stellars and all that sort of stuff. Yeah. Absolutely, yeah. Yeah, that is, um, that's, that's probably the sort of recognised, yeah. uh, for want of a better word, number one kind of street attack. Interesting when people say that because as far as I'm aware, there are no actual specific stats for that data. Um, although a lot of things do sort of correlate towards it with hospital records or that kind of stuff. But there's no actual statistics to prove that by itself that I'm aware of. If I'm wrong, that'd be great. No, uh, again, without, I don't know, but the spear package from Teddy Blair is the one that put that as the main stat. So I think there is, yeah. for the UK, yeah. was, uh, those sort of things, grabs and headbutts are quite common. Yes, yes. Out of kilter for the rest of the world for some reason. <laughs> yeah. um, well, headbutts are easy catches, don't they? Well, basically, but, but headbutts are particularly a British thing because of football, believe it or not. Um, many, many years ago, leather footballs in the rain, because it always rains around here, um, very heavy things. People got very good at headering the ball, so and that became a weapon, and they became very good at doing it. Strange but true, apparently. Okay, right, so basically, a headmaker, just to show what we're talking about, right? So, again, if I stand here, Okay, and I, uh, and I take some sort of position, and then I step through with the strike, there's a lot of warning to that, there's a lot of build up to that, and if I'm doing 
this haymaker style punch, then what I'm actually doing here is just boom, it's just swinging for the fences. And again, it's overbalancing. Now that's really important because if I throw a boxer's foot here, I'm actually balanced, I'm actually in control. And even if he grabs my hand here, that isn't going to stop me, that isn't going to stop me from hitting him again and doing all kinds of other stuff because I'm still balanced. Whereas if I throw a haymaker style and I overbalance, now the world's a different place. Now that's where those things become really effective. So I think it's really important that we clarify a boxer's hook is a different thing to a haymaker style shot. So with that in mind, we'll have a little look at that. Right, so if I'm going to be attacking with a haymaker style punch, um, then you have answers to that, yeah? Okay, yeah, we would yep. be blending a and, and working off it. Alright, so, so if we have a look at one or two of those, right, so this is now, look, a minute ago I was like, knew what I was doing, now I'm completely <laughs> at his mercy, right? So, if I'm here and I throw my big swinging hook punch, okay, that's alright, so if we come this way, I'll do it this way, yeah? So if I'm here, look, and I come from here, yeah. okay, okay, yeah? It's the concept for me of shoulders, hips, central balance point. If you're here, I can't do If I move this shoulder to that hip, mm -hmm. suddenly your, your natural reaction now is to try and get that balance back. But I've got yeah. some control over here. Loads of techniques. Uh, simplest one, I'll just put, press it straight through that elbow. Yeah. It, it's, I don't like going for the more complicated, but something there, just, just take it. So, and all that's doing, if you go again, if you're on balance and I put pressure here, yeah. example, you're going to you're going to resist that all day long. I move that shoulder here. Yeah. Suddenly I put that pressure there, yeah. and you have to go with it. Even if you don't go all the way down, yeah. we're suddenly yeah. in a much lower position. Yeah. Then who knows where to come from? Yeah. So the key thing there, and it's because it's it's taking that balance, and it, it's got to come from our timing. Because if you, if you do that, I don't, you can throw it this one this way. Oh, right, 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 right. What's going to happen? You're not going to resist that. It's the double impetus. I pull, push, down. Yep. I line that to the way. So that's, that's a little bit of that blending. Okay, great theory when, I, when you've got. Mm -hmm. If you do that with a boxer's hook, so you, yeah. you can tighten up. So if I'm here and a boxer's hook, I haven't got time because. You've over, because that's coming back now, because you're not going to leave it there. Oh, that's right, yeah, yeah. That's yeah, going to move yeah, back. Yeah. And this is where the down problem is. So, back to the hay maker thing, it's that the room motion. If you throw it, I'll do nothing else. You kind of miss. That's that room in motion. So I'm entering your space because you want to own that bit of space, don't you? If you do it without me, look at this. There's the space that you want to own. If you do it again, I want to own that space there. So it makes it harder for you to be in that position and then blend. And again, for me, it might go the other way, I might start to push back. Yeah. Again, your shoulders are off balance. There, might come. If you go, if there were probably more like just straight arm or something like that. Yeah. But it's got to be one of those. Yeah. Okay. Works when you give me a little bit too much. And that's the trick that's what I'm looking for is how can we make what we're doing here fit more when I haven't got that control. Because if I haven't got your balance, I haven't got that either. Well, can I, can I just yeah. add on to that a little bit, right? Because I think, again, it's really important that we clarify um, where it's good as much as we try and point out where maybe it's a little bit weak, yeah. right? Now, the angle in the circle, and that's concurrent with you know, martial arts across the board. Right, taking different centre lines, that's, that's across the board with all martial arts, right? Taking balance is across the board with all martial arts. So even down to the joint separation there, we call it something different, but it's one and the same thing. So when we look at this position, which is where you was where you was pressing down here to get this body here, we call this joint separation because basically what we're doing is we're telling the brain that we're separating the joint here and here. So the brain says, I don't want to get injured, so it will follow it. So as I press here, look, see the body will follow. And that's exactly the same thing. So the, so the technical aspects of what you're doing they, they, they're throughout a number of different martial arts, so, so there's definitely... We call that sumia dosh, you know, mm. you know, uh, quarter drop. Because the idea is, you, you'll see it done flashy, but what happens is, is I take my hand, yeah. ideally what I want to do, I'm trying to put that behind you, and then that's where you... Like, if you do it to me, I'll, I'll do the other... Yeah. So you're going to push it, but you're going to put that right behind me, and yeah. what I do is I... Yeah. 
Okay. Oh, which one? Yeah. Yes, that's the stylized one. What are you doing? So you're driving that cross by the motor, which is a nice stylized up here, though. It won't work on the street. What will now work. I can see why you guys enjoy it so much. That was great, right? <laughs> <laughs> but on the street, that will still. No, I'm not going to flip on the street, no one's going to flip on the street. Mm. What the, the principle is still there. If you drive that down, I've got no choice in my way to go down with it. Yeah, you'll get the collapse, that's right, yeah. yeah. But then it's knowing again where to be with that. Because again, that's quite an interesting point, because what's going on there? Because if you're, if you're automatically going into that role, then I can stop my energy at this point. Because if you want to do my turn, because mm. my Ikea train tells me, you're going to crank that on really nicely, mm. so I'm going to flip and go Yes, over. yeah. That's why I'm, I'm becoming compliant. Yeah, yeah. It's good. It, it means you could probably hit that and I'll go smash over, yeah. which is great for you, but you're building a false response. Yes, yeah. So now, uh, now that we understand that concept of that a little bit, right, um, without putting like loads of power onto it, I just want you to, to isolate that movement. So you're just going to do the grab. So, so and the grab push there. here, yeah. So you're just going to do the push wherever you were there. Right, so what I want you to do is to do what you're doing. So as if you would do that normally, don't take it all the way through, but I just want you to use that energy to come through. Right, okay, now, here's the thing with this, when you start adding um, just that little bit of movement and resistance with it, because you were saying about going into the roll. Yeah. Okay, now if you do that again, look, now just by changing my relative position here, okay, not only does it take away the pressure on that, I mean, push through now. I've got nothing, you're yep. getting your balance there, yep. I've got nothing. But more, I'm more importantly, look where I am with your balance now. Yeah. See, so that's relative position. So just by changing my position very, very slightly, by not doing the norm, it, it takes a lot of that away. And that's one of the things that we were talking about with regards to um, doing things in a very set-specific way. When something doesn't, then it kind of throws a little bit out of kilter. That isn't to say, mind, that... It's if that's you do you to the class? Do you yeah. do they oh yeah, beginners are always the worst, that's right, because you know what they're going to do. <laughs> but also, that isn't to say that if you set it up correctly and do that, then, you know, I, I know you're going to do it, yeah. I've advanced warning you're going to do it, which makes it a damn sight easier for me to think of things to do against it, right? So, that goes without saying on all of this, right? So, here, if we're looking at that, and we're looking at that coming in motion, so if I throw in a hook, as in a hook, and I'm here, now that's a much smaller motion, isn't it? Yeah. Okay, now if we're looking at that, you can still, you can still do things within this. Okay, but if you're looking at lines, right, so as an example of that, if you throw a hook at me in a minute, right, so here, look, so there's your line, see all this open space? Okay, so what I'm going to do is just, is just show you a little variation, which is actually a, a boxer's technique, but I think you might be able to put this to use in a moment, we'll have a look and see. So here, look, as you, as you come with that shot here, boom, see? So what I'm doing is I'm taking the, taking the line that way, but if you look at the circular motion, if you come again, boom. Now if you look at the circular motion, look, I'm still, I'm back in that. Yeah. So if we come around this way, I'm shot it here. So as you throw the punch here, boom, see I'm coming this way. Now I can control here, or I can just come in with the strike here, then look to move. Again, it's just a, a variation. It's a, you're straight lining, what? Because when, when you do your hook punch, I'm, I'm turning, I'm blending, mm. but slow, whereas what you're doing there is just the fastest line between two points, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, I'm taking the short line, that's right, yeah. Yeah, yeah. It's still, still circling, but it's a smaller circle, so it's the inner circle. Um, and so when we talk about circles, you guys do a lot of circling, but they're very big circles. Yeah. So I'm, so I'm sort of saying maybe taking that little circle. And if I can show you a strike on this, yeah, yeah. Um, that you can put to this, because the motion there is, is something that this will really lend itself to, so I'll show you a strike. Okay, so um, what we'll do there is if, if we look at that particular movement that we were just doing, um, and so we were coming round, and you were, you were circling round, and you were connecting with your hand. Yep. All right, so what we're going to do is have a look at a little strike to maybe help out with this. So if I give you the pad a moment, right, so if I give you that, just put it on this hand for me, please. Okay. Now here, there's a thing called a, a power slap, right? Now, a um, wonderful guy called Dave Turton taught me this. Um, lots of other people do it, but Dave was the guy that sort of uh, made this the thing of beauty that it has become. <laughs> so what I'm doing here is I'm using this connection as actually as a strike. Now I'm setting it up, one of the ways to practice this is just to come from open-handed position here. So if you think about this position, mate, I don't want to fight, yeah? There's no need to do this, yeah? That kind of thing. And there's my range, there's my connection here. Now what I don't want to do is draw right back and boom from here. 
giving way too much away. So I'm going straight for my position here, pivot on the hips, and I'm just coming through here. So in the strike is all the way through the pad. Now, just put your hands down a moment for me. Now, if we think about connecting on that with a person, now from here, boom, I'm looking to come in anywhere down here, anywhere around here, you can hit temple. So anything what they call the high line. And I'm just, bam, just driving that in. So if we think about you doing that a moment, if I just have that one second, so without the actual power, and then I'll add that back in. So if I throw that hook again, here, now you do, that's it, so you come with what you were doing a moment ago, right? So here, now this connection here now can be a lot more forceful by using that technique. And you can really, you know, ring somebody's bells with it. So if I hold the pad a moment, and we'll give it a try. So if we just go from this position for the minute, and we just, so, so if you stand square on, nice and relaxed, so just hands up, and we just go from here for the moment, just to get the mechanic. That's it. There you go, swing. Good, strong. That's it. So straight away, look, just by hitting something with some resistance, it's a different feel to it, yeah? Right, now, if you now go into your motion, so if you think about how much you're throwing the attack, so you step through with it and then, that's it, now, there we go, look. <laughs> yeah, good. Ooh, yeah. Now that's going to smile. Good. All right, now, so straight away, look, it's making this a little different now. Yeah. So if we now come back into the technique, don't whack me. <laughs> but, <laughs> but if I now come back into the technique and I'm doing my throw here, look, now we've got a good connection here. But now if you continue and keep, keep hold a minute, so as I come through here, form, look, see, it's really, really helping with that balance. And that is enough. Yeah. Usually just take somebody straight off their feet like that. And if you can then incorporate this kind of motion to go with it, yeah. you're going to get a very good, a good come through. So, one of the, 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 one of the ways that um, we tend to do this, so just to show it, just to, just to break it down even smaller, right, so if you just grab on a minute here, so here, look, if I've got a connection, I've got through motion this way, which is exactly what you're talking about, what yeah. you're doing there, but then I couple that here with this connection here, look at the balance in the bottom right here. Oops, sorry. <laughs> It, 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 it tilts over. Yeah, absolutely, yeah. So, if we look at doing that from the punch, what we're basically doing, the mechanics is just the same here, and it's the same here, but with that connection look, and it's the same turn, boom. And then we've got this, down we go, boom. So now, look, if I do that with you, and I throw that punch again, just and you do that, over. so I'll throw the, the, the haymaker, and you just do what I just did, yeah? So if I come in now, look, I come here, boom, that's it, that's it. <laughs> there we go, all right? So, if we go a little bit more, Okay. So as I throw, if we just come this way, just a fraction, just on the head thing. There we go. All right. So as I come through the throw, look. Sorry, right. That's good. Yeah. No, that's good. That's perfect. Right. Firstly, because people will enjoy seeing me get dumped on my back. So. And secondly, because straight away, look, what we've done is we've done one little pad drill, and all of a sudden, yeah. that's now much more dynamic, and that's really gonna. The other thing, it the focus slightly changes on the activity being important because if I focus on the arm. The Temi, for me, I always say to starts precision, you've got that, it doesn't matter how powerful I can throw it, if I can't hit you, it doesn't matter. Secondly, a bit of pace, because you need to recover it, and then power is almost the third thing you bring to it, because actually if, I, if it's precise and it's fast, it's going to land, yeah. it will do enough yeah. to slow you down. It might not be the knockout punch that sparks you straight out, but it doesn't need to be. What it needs to do is land and do some effective yeah. damage, rather than me thinking, because most of you know, there's my focus, I'm going to catch this arm. Mm. As opposed to thinking what I need to do is yeah. deliver enough of a distraction that you change your mindset. Yeah. So one of the other um, shots that you looked at was a straight line shot. And so again, there's loads of different variations in different styles that do similar punches, right? So the validity of the punch isn't in question. What is in question again is how it's, yeah. how it's, how it's delivered, if you like, the platform that it comes from. Now, one of the things with this, again, if we look at that, that circular motion, so if you come back to throwing that big punch there, so here, look, as we come here, we've got this straight centre line. Okay, now, if we look at my movement and we look at circular motion again, all right, now one of the things with this now is it is very hard to grab a punch. If we come again, now if it's coming like this and I know it's there, then I can grab. If he's pulling it back, not so much, right? 
So I'd get, but what I can do, if it's, if it's linear, I know that just by changing my line slightly, here look. But if we go back into these circles, now these circles are important. If we go back to these circles, now what I do is as I pivot, elbow comes through here. So as you come again, look, what you're actually getting here, look, see? Now, if I get the connection here, great, I can go straight in. We can look to brakes, we can look to tie-ups, all the rest of it. If not, then what I've got is a good connection through here. Now, again, look, I know this is something that you guys do because, again, it's throughout. Literally, I'm already underneath and above. All I need to do is step and extend. Very, very simple motion. Yeah, yeah. But what I'm doing is I'm not getting into the position. So, if you're coming so I'm not looking to sort of just come into position. What I'm doing is to come once more. What I am looking to do is boom, strike in, boom, strike here, boom, come through. So we've got striking every point of the, the journey. Yeah. yeah? Okay. Again, the idea of what you're what you're describing we call a kite So obviously, mm -hmm. as that punch comes in, all I'm looking to do is just yeah, it's, absolutely. It's, yeah. Okay, it's just shifting the slide yeah. yeah. And that technique you're talking, we, we call shipping So as it, as it comes in, all I can do is yeah, take the balance. Head goes one way, arm goes the other way, and the balance goes from there. Yeah. So yeah. the Aikido world, that's the yeah. technique we're doing. Yeah. We're putting in a decent attempt. But look, but look at your position. So if we come around the other way from there, so I want you to show, show that again. So as I come in here, look, now, we're relying on the grab. Yeah, we're relying on, I've got to pull you there. Yeah. And now, and then look. I've got to get in behind. Yeah, and look at that. This is another thing that's really important. Look at the hand positioning. So you came, you came through, so you're already in this position. Yeah, pull. it's almost. Okay, there. so again, you're relying on me stood here waiting for you, right? So if you do manage to connect, so if I do step and you connect, I'm not going to stand still. Straight away, it's one of those. Once you start adding even a tiny bit of extra movement or resistance, it it, mm, then it makes it different. Yeah. So now this is where those strikes again can come in yeah. as blockers on that. So if you come through, so if I come again here, so you grab here, look, elbow straight through. See, that stops, <laughs> that stops yeah. me escaping now. Eh? Okay, so it stops me doing that. And, and here again, you've got all kinds of different things that you can look to do on this. So it can be just straight arm out and look to break balance this way. It can be looking to track and tie the arm. Um, again, I wouldn't do that personally. Well, I say I wouldn't do that personally, so I wouldn't do that. But when you look at the different levels, once we start getting into the realm, look at this arm. Once we start getting into the realms of trying to spin arms, spin arms, there's so much space, there's so much room. And again, I'm reliant on you. Trust me, you wouldn't, you wouldn't get this on a wrestler. Yeah. The moment that you try to spin arms on a wrestler, that dude's gonna be it. He's gonna be on you, all right? It's gonna make that hard. So that's one of the reasons where the, uh, where the striking comes in and can be useful. But if we come into that again, so as we come through here, look, so boom here, boom. So I'm looking to connect here. If I get the hand as a bonus, if I don't, then that's not the end of the world because I can look to reconnect here. Okay, now I know I'm facing the wrong way, but I'm going to show you the elbow coming through here. So if we just come around here, okay, so we dive. So here, look, if I don't get the arm at this point, then I can look to reconnect here. Boom. All right, now from this position here, if we think about big movements, then there's a lot to go here. But if I think, if I just raise the arm, and again, I know you guys do all of these sorts yeah. of things. So from here, if I just raise the arm, just by pushing the arm up and coming over this way, look. Really growing, really correct. Cool. Yeah, I'm short in the space. Definitely. And so what I'm doing is I'm saying I'm going to give the other person less opportunity to move within what I'm doing. Which, again, it's one of those where um, over the years of working doors and things like that, you find out that not only do people wriggle, they wriggle in so many different ways that you can't possibly work them all out beforehand. So the, the smaller we can make it, the better. Right, right so what I was going to show right, was, was a, um, funny enough, the, the punch that I'm going to show now, the way to do it, was actually done, and it, and it blew up a little bit the other week. Um, Peter Constantine did, did the variation of this punch. And he showed you, I think it was on Rock's channel. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The, the double. Yeah, double hit, right? Now, it's really interesting because uh, I've been doing this particular punch or a variation of for a long, long time, but it was from Peter that I first saw it. So, you know, absolute hats off to him for having this. But what I found was I could utilize him what I do. Now, it may not be exactly how Peter does it, and that's, that's, that's fine. So, refer to him for the, uh, for the source. Okay, but 
With regards to short range punching, this is where it became very valuable for me, short range punching and short straight punching. So when we're talking about this kind of step through punch here, how do we generate this kind of force through, through something else other than momentum? So if I'm coming through, that's momentum. Whereas if I'm here, how do I achieve that? All right, and so this double hip kind of thing could be really useful for that. So I'll just grab pad one second. So what I'll do is I'll grab Okay, so if we, um, if we come back around this way, because I'll use my left hand this time, um, we'll see what we're doing. So basically, if you just hold that there a minute. Right, now, what I'm doing with this, if you think about throwing a ball, right? When you throw a ball, hip, shoulder, arm. It's not hip and shoulder at the same time. So if we think about punching here, hip and shoulder at the same time, we can certainly get a certain amount of forces, no crazy about that. But if I want to make it a bit more, then hip goes first. So I'm going to over-exaggerate it. So hip comes back, hip comes forward, then the shoulder comes through. So hip, hip, one shoulder, hence the term double hip, all right? Now I'm just gonna do a little bit, I'm not gonna hit real power, but just to show you what I mean, okay? So if I'm here, look, my distance is literally this, nothing more, okay? So hip, hip, and then shoulder, so boom, hip. And you can feel that picking up power. So that position, look, relax, one, two, boom, boom. And we're looking to just move into that, right? So if I have that minute, you can give it a try. Yeah. So, um, whichever hand you want to use, so it's fine. Let's see how it is. Okay, so hip goes back and hip goes forward. Let's see how it is. There we go. Should we try it off the back as well? Yeah, always. Yep. All right, so what we do, we're not doing an explanation on this or a tutorial on this. Like I said, uh, check back Peter's video uh, to get this to, to get this properly. It's just showing you some of the slight differences and variations. So when we're looking at that striking, what I want people to try and do is to, to shorten it. Whenever I see this, or this, or this, instantly I'm like, oh, here we go again. Right. Which you don't have as well. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Here's your target. Yeah. And you'll see that, and so it's like, right, so they know exactly what's coming, all the rest of it, which is fine, and that's okay, I understand that. All right, but what then gets my goat is when somebody starts from all the way over here, and they do this big stepping through movement, because you really just don't see that in the real world. Um, and again, I've got to be careful with my terminology in the real world, but you very rarely see that in street fighting, okay? It's very odd that that happens. So, what we want to try and do is become a bit more realistic in how we deliver our punches so that we can help how you defend the punches, right? That's vitally important because if the only strike I know is this, then how am I going to help you to defend against a right hook? Yeah, or a, or a, or a right cross or a, or a stiff jab, you know, if you don't know how to do any of these things, okay? So from here, what I'm actually going to do is I'm just going to throw my right cross here, boom. Okay? Now again, what I'm doing, stepping slightly out, that hip motion is what gives me the power through. And then I'm placing it right on the point of the, the jaw here. That's where I want to be hitting. Okay? So I'm placing that there on purpose. So I'm not doing this. I'm actually doing this. Why? Look at the difference in my arm. Right? Again, these things are really, really important. If you stick your arm out full length, if I stick out full length, let me run a throw. Now you'll see this a lot. This is what I mean by this, right? Now if somebody really needs to grab me, they're gonna have a bent arm. Why? Take the strength, that's where they're stronger. When you see it done in most martial arts clubs, you'll see it done like this. And so what happens is this, the student goes, oh, arm bar, right? And they place a really nice arm bar. But then when somebody does it for real and the arm's like this, they're like, this, my arm bar's not working, what's going on? It's because the, the way it's trained is slightly different. So, when I throw this punch, well, I want to come here with the connection as it should be, with a slightly bent arm. Okay? Right, so, now from here, look, well, if I was throwing that at you like that, what well, have you got a... For me, I, would really think, I don't train the tension hand deflections per se, but they, I would work off that. My mm. kilo stuff would work. So I, I'd be looking I'd, I'd really at your hands. So you, we talk yeah. about hand positions. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Your hands are there, my hands are here. Yeah. If your hands come up, yeah. my hands are going to come up. Because yeah. I'm mimicking you. If your hands are down here, I would probably, I'd probably slightly, have, slightly above you, but I'm not, I'm not going to be here like this because third by perception says I'm the aggressor, not you. So yeah. if your hands are up for that, that punch, my, my hands are going to be up yeah. about here. And I'm looking. Basically, just to guide off this. So as, as your cross is coming in, I'm looking as best I can just to literally chop into my centre. Because okay. anything, anything coming straight, just drop across that centre line. Yeah. 
and just like almost hand set. Yeah. The, the tension guys will do proper yeah. uh, hand deflections like, like that. Mine are a lot shorter, more just jamming it because mm -hmm. it only takes a, 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 enough jam to get it. That's not going to stop, so I know you've got a hand spin coming next. So yeah. I'm basically going to try and, I'm basically going to try and tie this area up. Mm -hmm. The other flip side, obviously the hooks come on the inside, and then, but what I'm going to do is try and get in. For me, if I can get something here to your shoulders, you can start throwing punches, it's going to take a lot of power out of your. Mm -hmm. So, if I can, yeah, in that respect, yes, definitely, yeah. yeah. And then, there's one there, and then there's a different catch to catch the fish. But for me, if you're throwing punches, I'm literally hands chopping in the centre of it, looking, and this is a personal thing, trying to chop in that over. Because once I've got that shoulder, yeah. I've taken Owen. I said that the MDM concept of minimise damage, disrupt, maximum damage. I've got to minimise the damage you're doing to me. Yeah. And you're a big guy, you're fast. If I can jar your shoulders, I should take the punching out of play. It will probably bring on another set of problems which I have to deal with, but yeah. for the time being. Yeah. You, and I, I'm fairly confident that if someone's trying to punch you, I'm going to be able to block enough that you're probably going to. You won't land as many as you do land, which is how long can I sustain as you do land one, if that makes sense. Well, you can try all that if you really want to. Not massively, but. <laughs> now the reason I say that again is, is because I actually think you're a little bit more confident of that than, than it should be. Okay. Um, the premise, I agree with you, and again the premise is, again that's, that, that can be found right across the board. So whether it's a boxer's parry, so yeah. whether we're boxing parry here, whether we're looking at pulling well, these kind of things, these kind of, the, the motion is, you know, it is apparent throughout all different martial arts again. So same deal on that. So, so fundamentally it's fine, isn't it? And so it works. Um, again, it's, it's maybe the application slightly that's just a and little this, bit. This is the joy of today. It's bringing yeah. principles and concepts yeah. and exposing them or strengthening them or, or maybe tweaking them so that they actually think, okay, like it. In that case, if that's probably not going to work, where, where do we go with it? Okay, so, not that that's not going to work because we've already established that that's used throughout all kinds of different martial arts and everything, and that particular movement with your sort of parry kind of action. So, that's not it. The, 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 the issue that I would have with it is that, like with everything else, the moment that you close one door, another door opens, so you can't defend 100%, you just can't. And wherever your hands go, there's going to be a, an equal and the open space, yeah? And so if I'm, if I'm, if big movements, if big movements here look wide open space, all right? And that's just something, for somebody that knows how to throw hands, you know, they'll, they'll be aware of that. All right, so, I mean, if you want, I can show you, say, if you want to put a bash out, I can show you very quickly, without, obviously, nobody's clubbing anybody, but just to show you what I mean. If you want to, I've got no issue exposing the holes, that's what I'm Okay, well, it's, it's not so much exposing holes, that's perhaps not, um, but what it's doing is it's just showing that um, the, 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 there might be a slightly different way of looking at it, because you're used to being punched by people that don't really know how to punch. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> I hear that, this is not my best idea, but I... <laughs> No, no, that's fine, as I said, we're keeping it but, very relaxed. Um, you know, this is, this is, if you don't push your boundaries, you're never going to know the boundaries are. No, that's right, yeah. And so well, this is actually a really effective way to drill it and be a nice drilling it as well. Because like I said, the idea of this, guys, is I, what I don't want to do is injure him, hurt him, or make him scared to be hit, or, or, or take the mickey in any way, because that's totally disrespectful. The aim of this, as a training partner, is for me to help him to figure out how to be better. And I expect the same back in return. That's how this works. Yeah? So it's done with total respect for one another. Right now, from here, look, if we look at your position and we look at my position in, right, so already we've got slight differences in how we are. Okay, so straight away, put rigid arms are up. And I can't really see any real bending in the knees. I'm not sure what's going on under there. That's the right, a little bit of bend. There we go. Okay, so I'm just going to start light and loose, all right? Yeah. Okay, all right. So. So, I don't have to do any more than that. Basically, I'm here your will. Yeah, I'm more, sorry, more than 50%, definitely. Oh, definitely more than 50%, yeah. Okay. Now, the reason that that's happening is very straightforward. Okay? So, what's happening is this is I am throwing a punch, whatever that punch may be. You are doing your deflection or block, but it's leaving a big gap. So, what I'm doing is the moment that that happens is I'm just retracting and coming around the gap. Or, I'm then sending something else out as a fake because I know you're going to react to that, which leaves a big gap. Right? So that's basically what I mean by I think you may have. 
just a little bit more confidence in it yeah. than, than maybe it, it kind of warrants, right? So, um, if I get you some gloves in a minute, in fact, if you don't mind sticking that, that's right. Yeah, that's fine. Um, Okay, right, so here what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to take more of a boxes kind of approach to this and have my hands up a little bit more. Alright, so we just do a little bit. So you throw some punches. Okay, right, so you're getting some through. But less. Yeah. But not only is it less, but I'm also always in a position where I can return fire straight away, right? So it's not to say you don't get hit. I mean, if anyone figures out an art where you just never get hit, do tell, right? I'll take it up immediately. Yeah. <laughs> back a minute. Um, so it's more just a case of, again, just being able to look at things like this, like we were just yeah, doing. Yeah. See, straight away on that, it, it instantly gives you a way to calibrate whether something's true or not. It's a tactile feedback. Isn't it? Absolutely, yeah, exactly, that's right, yeah. So, when we look at this now, what we're doing is just basically turn that into a little quick parry, right? So, if we look at this punch here, so if we're looking at throwing a cross punch, we take that to it. So, you're throwing a straight punch here, that's it, and it's coming towards my nose. Now, if we look at a, a boxer style parry, they move their head as well, so as it comes here, and that's vital on this, is instead of just staying put and having a big movement, as it comes here, boom, see? We've got the movement. Now, if you notice, what I was doing then, I was actually doing the thing there and pointing, right? <laughs> so as the punch comes up, boom, I'm moving my head slightly here. All right, now, are you happy for me to add on to this? Because I can show yeah, you. Yeah, All right, so a little variation on this again, and I know this is your stuff, and I know this is what you guys do, and, and you can feedback, you know, better, worse, or different, whichever. So as it comes here, we've got the same connection here, but what I'm doing now, look, is bringing this arm up here. And again, we've got a circular motion, exactly the same as what we were doing a minute ago. Boom, here. Yeah. And you can take the person straight down, so once more, so again, yeah, boom, see? And now if I continue the roll, I'll just bring it down slowly. As I continue the roll, look, just brings the person down. So, again, not a big motion, so once more, so here, yeah. boom, <laughs> So that's not a big motion. And you probably combine with hit that as well, couldn't you? Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, if you wanted to, then there's no reason why you couldn't. If you come again, there's no reason why you couldn't look to come in on strikes with that, then look to connect. I think more of the face because it's, it's all yeah. the same yeah. into that line. Oh, absolutely, again, yeah. That's what we do with our temi. It's almost like the temi continues into the mm. blend, whereas that always works. Mm. Yeah, so if I, if I come at you, yeah, hang on, sorry. 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 so if I come at you, I'm hitting, there's a, it almost comes naturally into that yeah. motion. And then from there, yeah. where our temi can go. Yeah. Yeah. Again, that's what we try. We try and use the interviews. Becomes the blend. That sounds a bit yeah. cheesy, but there's no point in trying to hit you here and then have to come back and collect. Whereas yeah. if I can, if it hits and then it's coming to the right place, short line from A to B. It's already on. It's already on its way. Yeah. Got to be if you move your head. <laughs> yeah. So, so you yeah. move your head back right miss. Yeah. It's in that position. Yeah. And carry on. So I quite like how if you did that with a head one because it. It will become the next move. One quick thing, just one sec, just hold still. Right. I'm a great believer in this sort of thing, right? So I just want to show. Okay, now, when we look at it striking through to connection, boom, right? That's great until I connect. Then I haven't gotten through to connection. And so, one easy way to show this, right? So, for those who like to play with toys, okay? So, if I've got a set of nunchucks, right? And, you know, I quite like playing with nunchucks. So, if I'm here and I'm doing this kind of thing, see, I can do all these kind of fancy twirls, right? Now, I'm not going to hit properly. But the moment I connect, so if I don't connect, see? Boom, see, I can look to, boom, 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 see, I can move through. The moment that I connect, oh, it's gone. Yeah. That's, it's just, it's just one of those little points where, it's, it's, it's good to have. So if I, you know, if I throw, boom, and I slip, boom, or it doesn't connect, then yeah, you've got absolutely, I'm in there. But if I do connect, and I've got a hand, what have you, especially if I connect properly, where are you going? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So that's a really vital point because a lot of this, you're, you're, okay. it seems to be that you, you're expecting the person to be in exactly the same place once you've hit it. It's probably our lack of 
proper attendant because I'm expect- mm. I hear expecting the person to move their head through. There's my attendant. Yeah. Let me take the balance as opposed to. Yeah. Yeah. But if we look, so basically, look, I'm not going to do this properly, but if you if you do the punch again, right? So if you punch again, hit button, right? And now if I come in with whatever kind of connection, right? The moment that I connect, boom, see, it's going to affect where you go and what you do. Now, you're right, I can drop down into here in this particular one. If I come straight punch, it's going to be slightly more difficult to do. But it's just to be aware that when you strike to move in, that there is that sort of delay and the person will move to different places. So again, it's not to say it's not valid, because it is, but if you're going to practice it, practice it with the, with the movement. So again, what, um, wonderful day to it, and he, he, he was great at this sort of thing. So if you went up to demonstrate something and he said, right, I'm going to kick you in the nuts, and then he went like this, and you didn't move, he'd kick you in the nuts, right? Because what he would expect from you is a realistic reaction to that particular technique. So if somebody's looking to punch me in the face, if they connect, my head's going to go back or it's going to come over to the side, there's going to be some kind of reaction. And so um, we want to be following that through. So say for example, I'm throwing just a plain jab cross, right? So if I throw a if I throw a plain jab cross here and here, that's fine if you haven't moved. If however I impact on the jab, my cross now isn't there. Now all of a sudden my lack of footwork and understanding of this is going to wreck it for me. Something that simple. Yeah. <laughs> Something that simple can make such a big difference. And it's that realistic practice, because if you're practicing hitting pads and they're moving, you're going to get used to the follow up step or the drop step and following up from there. Yeah, no, absolutely, yeah. So if we're looking at this now, we're looking at striking um, specifically for this. Now, if we look at your, um, your moving for the striking, now, one of the things to look at is to take, um, say, a boxer's approach a little bit. So again, this isn't to dismiss anything that we're doing, but it can help set up. So if you think about moving off the angle, so if you just throw, just stick a jab out, whatever, just stick a jab out, that's it, right? So if we're here, this is our linear line, right? Now if we think about this parry that we was doing a moment ago, now if I stay rigid here, this makes it harder for me. Whereas if here I move off the line, and that here, boom, see? Yeah. And so again, there are things that you guys do, I know that involve all of this kind of stuff. But what it does is it helps me to position myself, especially with the circles and the angles, that head movement and, and, and moving the feet specifically. So if we come to that jab again, so just by stepping off the line here is giving me a much better positioning and movement wise. Now, again, when we look at um, these catches and leads into other things, which we'll have a look at in a moment, then people like, like the practice of now leave the arm out. People that are throwing a jab, throwing a jab, throwing a jab, tend to pull it back in. So what I want you to do is just throw a jab lightly in my hand and quick. Bring it back, that's it. Quick, bring it back. Push, quick, bring it back. Push, quick, bring it back. Oh, there you go. Right, now, so if we look at that as opposed to this, right? so if you throw the jab again, boom, see? Now, see, look. Now what I've done, look, is I've moved off the line, but I haven't got you. Now that's really vitally important because if I'm practicing you hanging out here and me connecting, then when it comes for real, I'm, I'm, again, it's a bit of a frightener at that point. Yeah. Okay? So here, look, let me throw this time again. Boom, here, look, as I come off the line, I'm going to be aware that this is going to retract. And so whatever I look to do now, I want to look to be able to you know, come into from that retracted position. Okay? So what's a likely thing from this position? So if I end up here, what would be a good thing for you guys? Again, probably again, so, so, again, so if you're retracting, I'm, I'm, yeah. I'm here. Again, for me, control that arm. Just from there, I've got, yeah. <laughs> or the gold standard, it would want to be here. So again, if I step up, if I step up, I'm going to say, that's our right. chain can, and we call it our sort of most general motion. Yep. Well, you know, we didn't connect that technique, because the here is, I'm going to balance, so what I'm going to do is hold your hand, and then you're going to. Yeah. Well, no, you've got us a better position than the first time yeah. round because if we come round again, again, the mechanics of throwing a punch, so if you just hold on to where you were, now the mechanics of throwing a punch, where we was a minute ago, I could easily throw from here, I haven't got my hips round, so I've got to follow you around. Yeah. yeah. And again, but you, you know I've got to do that. And we try and feel that, so you, you'll see the big circle, we'll yeah. try and use my hip to steer you around. So. Yes. Uh, there's your classic yeah. Aguilo coaching yes. game, which seems to go off, you know, everyone does. Absolutely, yes, even I do that, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, absolutely, yeah. But that's, that's, one, that's, that's one of the points I'm getting at, is when you're practicing any kind of striking, um, you want to make sure that it's as realistic as you can make it within safety parameters. So if I'm throwing out a jab, I don't want to just leave it out for 
you know, 20 seconds or whatever. I, want to, I, I don't want to go top speed, but I do want to pop it out warm and then come back into here. And it's like, well, where can I work from from here? So just a little quick one, just to show if we come around a bit. So again, these are all basics for you guys, bread and butter stuff, right? So if you throw your jab out, look, so if we're here, boom, and I come here and I move in as it retracts here. Now, if I just connect onto the elbow, so all I'm doing is just turning my hand, connecting on the elbow, stepping through, boom. And again, I know you guys do this stuff all day long. I think if you ten in yeah. one. They, yeah. they, didn't, they didn't end in ten in three, ten in one, do you One, two, three. Yeah. But, but yeah. if you look at that from a retracted position, and again, we're, we're looking at not big movements, because if you think about if we come again and leave it out, if we think about this kind of rotation, this kind of rotation, it's great, nothing wrong with it, but look how big it is, right? Whereas if I'm here and I get a connection here, why can't I just pop? Here, why can't I just sit in nice and quiet, nice and quickly here, and just rotate in on the spot? Yeah, it's going to it's going to give me a, a better, outside of the blending aspect. That's going to give me what I want, which is which is damage and control. It's a, it's a circle principle, just smaller. much much smaller. Yeah, yeah. So if we look at that here with that jab again, look. So boom, if I come here, look. But now what I'm doing is as I move in. This hand comes up to protect, right? So I'm not, not sticking anything out, but to protect. And that gives me my connection here. Now I step across my lead leg, boom. And as you said, it's just a very basic technique for you guys, bread and butter stuff. Yeah. But try doing it off that jab. So you wanna try it? Yeah, yeah. So. yeah. so if I'm here, look, and I throw my jab out. So here, it comes back, boom, there we go. Right. So if I throw that now just a little bit quicker, so I'm not gonna throw it out, but I'm gonna retract properly, yeah? So boom, here. Right. Yeah, so that's all right there. Yeah. There you go. So we start moving in on the connection. So as I throw here, look, see, look, you've got this too slow coming in here. Yeah? So if you throw me in, I'll show you what I mean. So here, look, we get this connection here. Now, as soon as I connect here, what I do is I step in. Because I'm following you back. Yeah? So I'm step in, follow you back, right? So here, as I jump. Slide you back, okay, and again. So, yeah, that was better, that was better. There you go. Okay, one more time. Yeah, there you go, good, all right. So, it's just a few little ideas that we can play with. That's the idea with this, it's just stuff we can play with. So, um, I think that's gonna pretty much be I think that's covered part, part one. Yeah, I mean, that's covered. Changing the means actually hitting the pads, mm. establishing the, con the consequence of that actually will change the person. Mm. We've covered some of the basic, you know, some basic stuff, shorter, okay. That circle, I'll give it a that sphere and all this stuff, making it smaller yeah. makes it more achievable. Yes. Because we do, we do that same thing, it's just by the time it big, because the bigger the move, the bigger the opening for you, the yeah. smaller the move, the smaller the opening for you. Yeah, I think, I think what's interesting about this specifically is um, outside of the style of striking, everything that we've done is in Aikido. Yeah. It, all we've done is just change the uh, there's the movement a little bit, as in bigger and smaller and shorter and longer. But the, the movements, the techniques, they're already in Aikido, it's nothing new. That's what we said, you know, the techniques yeah. work, it's just getting into, getting into position to make the techniques work is where the struggle was. Absolutely, so yeah. Alright, so guys, don't forget to join us next time. We're going to do a couple of these, so um, look out for that one.